I would like to call together today's meeting. Today is December 10th, 2013. This is our regular meeting of the Rossmore Community Service District. Can we please have a call to order? Director Coletta? Present. Director Casey? Here. Director Kaler? Here. Director DeMarco? Here. President Maynard? Here. Please stand with me as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before starting this meeting, I would like everyone to uh, welcome our new general manager, Mr. Jim Ruth. Everyone give him a applause here. Let's make him feel good. He has been on board exactly one week in a day, so uh, we're very happy to have him. We have uh, great faith in his leadership, his abilities, and what he brings to the table. And I welcome all the community to get to know Mr. Ruth. Uh, he's an exceptional man of character, and I think everyone's going to enjoy working with him. Welcome aboard, and welcome to your to your desk there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good to be here. Trust me. Looking forward to working with everybody. Brings us to presentations. Lieutenant Gunzel. Thank you. Um, I know it's uh, we're bumping on to Christmas time, but I'm here to report the summertime stats uh, for mm -hmm. July, August, and September, third quarter. Um, as you noted, as you can note in the uh, in the breakdown of stats, um, a lot of things that we we experienced here are the crimes of opportunity. Uh, for July, August, and September, um, the stats are down as compared to last year at the same time. Uh, as of July. Um, we had one residential burglary from an unlocked window, and as we've discussed many times here, the, the you know we need help from the uh, from the people about securing their their property. Loss was uh, two iPads and a PlayStation, uh, one vehicle burglary, <coughs> where they lost a third row seat of a vehicle. Um, a county wide, as far as crimes uh, are concerned, that is still the number one vehicle theft of third row seats in vehicles in Orange County. So. Something we keep an eye on. Um, loss of a, a for sale sign. Unlocked mountain bike from sportsman. Unlocked vehicle, GPS taken. Uh, things of that nature all through July. Um, in August, so in July we had nine uh, part one crimes. In August, sexual assault, uh, or assault and battery, excuse me, at the corner of Bradbury and Weatherby. In, uh, in that instance, uh, it was a call from a tow truck driver that reported that he'd been shot at from the condo complex there. Um, wouldn't stick around to give statements. Wouldn't, we had no further information. So what we have here is what was reported to our CAD. What month again was that? This was in August. Okay. Um, so it was very, very strange that if a guy's getting, claim he's getting shot at, that he would stick around to report the crime. He was too busy and left and never came back. Hmm. So... Uh, we didn't have any evidence. We didn't have anything else to other than what he said. So the the report is written as as stated. Um, uh, another commercial burglary at the fish company where someone uh, gained access to through the uh, roof. I don't believe there's any loss or someone actually made entry into the into the restaurant. Uh, attempted burglary again. Alarm sounded and there was no loss in that one, even though those are still stated as burglaries. Uh, attempted vehicle uh, burglary, someone was walking down, checking door handles, uh, happens in every community, and, and hopefully my, my hard charging deputies catch people doing that thing. Um, again, for sale signs and unlocked vehicles. That's the majority of August. September, uh, one for sale sign taken from a front lawn. So September stats look pretty nice. I don't get that, the for sale sign being stolen. Someone else's property. <laughs> They take it from a Just lines. realtors stealing from each other? I, mean, I guess. It's a theft. It's a, it's it's a no part one, reportable part one crime. Okay. So, um, I like this one. Reported. And I know it's a little out of sequence, uh, but I'd rather talk about now the, the yeah. current situation with our, with our guys. And I sent a, an email to um, um, 
Jesus. I'm not sure if all the board got it, but I sent to Henry about uh, one of our deputies two weeks ago was driving around about 3 3 in the morning and saw a vehicle they thought was suspicious. Stopped that vehicle, turned out there was a layoff vehicle with that car. Um, through the investigation, discovered the vehicle was stolen at Long Beach. Two juveniles inside that car. Uh, they found numerous items of stolen property. Uh, some of the property they were able to identify as a victim here in Rossmore. Uh, those stats will be coming out uh, in the December, November, December stats for next report. Uh, like I said, I just want to kind of give kudos to my guys. Uh, out of this, they had numerous items that, that they still have, uh, haven't identified all the crime victims. They're Rossmore and, and Seal Beach and Los Alamos and Long Beach. Um, but new, numerous items booked as evidence and four people in custody, two juveniles and two adults. So, yeah, three o'clock in the morning, my guys are out driving around doing doing what they need to do. So pretty happy about that. Uh, any questions for me about the summertime stats? I guess what you're saying is the, the summertime, especially when there's just one petty theft in September, it's a lot more quiet than what goes on when, as we near the holidays. Generally, summertime is more busy. So if that's any indication, I, I mean, we've had, uh, in the last quarter, we had some burglaries, um, uh, uh, I would say a small rash of burglaries. So. Uh, I know the next report will have more of that, but uh, if it's summer's any indication, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So September was just a coincidence that it happened to be low in terms of crime in yeah. Rossmore. And again, like like I reported last quarter, I don't I don't take credit for the low stats, just like I won't take credit when they're high. So you, know, you have uh, to take credit for all of it. <laughs> well, well it's I, um, I, I give credit to my guys. So. Okay. It's unfortunate that your uh, table that starts this whole thing didn't have the totals for July, August, and September. Because if you had the totals, it, it shows that the trend is definitely down. Right, and half, and half of what corrected. you had. Sorry. My, See at the bottom that, there? After I sent them to Henry, I noticed that yeah. and mine's the corrected mm -hmm. version. So yeah, nine, eight, and one, so. Yeah, so nine is half the crime this year, July over previous July. Uh, significantly less in, Aug in August and then September is, wow, one crime versus seven, so. Right. And I, and I know Mr. Coletta had, had uh, referenced, I think, a couple, you know, last quarter, the one before, about the residential burglaries possibly going over the total of 2012. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on that one. We're still... Uh, I thought you brought it up. What do you expect to be the fourth quarter <laughs> I, I expect, the, burglaries I expect the crime tolls to be below last year's. I hope so, too. <laughs> Other than that, uh, uh, I think we're going to be close. So, and if we hadn't had a horrendous January for auto uh, vehicle burglaries, I'm just talking uh, about residential burglaries. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to be, I think we'll be below that 44 mark. Fingers crossed. Unless we have a last couple of weeks here are bad. What location was the uh, the two cars that you, with the deputy stopped with the juveniles in it? Do you remember? I uh, don't recall. Do you remember that was Henry? I don't recall. I'll bring it okay. in next okay. quarter and, and report. I, I recall it was uh, Tiger Tail and uh, Silver Fox. There you go. Oh wow! Oh, wow. All right, right around the corner. Close to where Bill and I live. We don't live together, but we live on the same. <laughs> we live on the same block. So. Well, sometimes we're just friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're going to be part of this. Any other questions for me? Thank you very much. Right. Thank, Thank you. Convicted? Thank you for no. <laughs> Never convicted. <laughs> okay. At this point, we do not have any additions to the agenda that I'm aware of, nope. which brings us to our public forum. Any person may address the board of directors at this time upon any subject within the jurisdiction of the Rossmore Community Service District. However, any matter that requires action may be referred to staff at the discretion of the board for a report and action at a subsequent board meeting. If anybody has comments or would like to approach, please do now. Hello. Hello. My name's Gary Stewart, and I'm the current uh, president of the Rossmore Homeowners Association. Um, I'm glad I came tonight because usually there's more RHA members here than, than are here right now, so I'm the only one. I came mainly to meet informally Mr. Ruth and welcome him to our community and extend our wishes for a fruitful relationship and a cooperative one. Um, 
other than that, I really have nothing, uh, nothing at this time other than to wish everybody a happy holiday season and look forward to seeing you all in the new year. We do appreciate that um, you have sent a representative to our meetings every month for the past few months. Uh, personally, I think that's very important for communication between the two bodies and uh, hopefully cooperative working together. So. Anyway, thanks for hearing me and welcome Mr. Ruth. Thank you very much, thank you. Okay, moving on. We do not have any reports to the board, which brings us to our consent calendar. Does anyone want to bring anything out of the consent calendar to discuss? Nope. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. The only request that I have is pulling out the minutes and voting on that separately to all the other issues, given that I was not at that meeting. So I, that way I can vote on the consent, but just not the minutes where I'll abstain. Okay. He's pulling A. Yeah. So two separate votes on that. All right, Mr. That, President. Oh, that needs I, to be a motion? Okay. Yeah, Mr. President, I'll make the motion that at this time we move forward everything but the minutes of last month's meeting where you were visibly absent and excused from the general <laughs> board meeting for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now for the minutes of last month's meeting, is there a motion to approve separate apart from my first? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, moving forward, that brings us to item G, resolutions. So I'll turn our pages there. The uh, E2. Just a second. O October revenue and expenditure report. Where are we on? Here. This is. Am I looking at the wrong? No. Page 33. <clears throat> we should be on G1, correct? Yeah, G1. G1. We're on G1, Bill. G1? We're not. G1. Mm -hmm. oh, E2. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. My bad. Sorry. <clears throat> Why don't you please walk us through it? Jim? I'm sorry. G1. We're on G1. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, this is a resolution that is required every time you have a change in, in the officers and the, uh, and the general manager for purposes of signing financial documents. Uh, Mr. Ruth is now being added and I'm being removed from that list. It's a, we've done this now several times recently and uh, we ask you for a roll call vote on this particular resolution. Is there a motion? Um, Mr. President, it needs to be a roll call vote. Yeah. Would you oh, like me to okay. proceed? You need, a, you need a motion. You do? A motion for a roll to, call? To approve the resolution by roll call vote. Okay. Is there a motion? I so move motion. that we... Second. Okay. Director Coletta? Well, we didn't vote on the motion. There's a first and a second, so now you have to vote on the motion. Oh, and okay. once the motion is approved, then you can take a Is that how that works? Call yeah. On those that are I versus yeah. nay. Yeah. Right? Okay. So to vote on the motion. I mean, it's just a matter of yeah. format. Nope. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Let's follow that. To take a roll call. So, all in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Negative. Okay. And we still now do roll call? You need a roll call, yes. Okay. <laughs> Director Coletta? Aye. Director Casey? Aye. Director Kaler? Aye. Director DeMarco? Aye. President Maynard? Aye. That brings us to G2, adoption and revision of certain policies by ordinance. Mr. President, members of the board, when you appointed new general counsel, he made us aware of a government code section that requires that board policies be adopted by ordinance. For the past eight years that I've been here, we've only adopted them by resolution. And that's not all policies. That only deals with policies that, that, that deal with your facilities, rentals, and use of, pub, of district property. What you have before you is the first reading for an ordinance that, for the first time, uh, readopts those ordinances that are enumerated in that ordinance for, uh, to be readopted by, by ordinance. And, uh, 
at your next month's meeting, you'll then have a second reading and 30 days from that, those, those uh, board policies will be technically legal again. As in the case of the uh, resolution previously, uh, we need a roll call vote for this ordinance. Is there a motion for first reading? So motioned. Second. Okay, all in favor of accepting ordinance of the Board of Directors of Rossmore Community Service Districts regarding the adoption and revision of certain policies by ordinance. Please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Now please roll call. Director Coletta? Aye. Director Casey? Aye. Director Kaler? Aye. Director DeMarco? Aye. President Maynard? Aye. Okay. Now we have that housekeeping done. We are going to move to section H. Come on. Take some navigating. There, there it is. First up on our regular calendar is an amendment of agreement with Valley Crest. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, you have a current agreement with Valley Crest to do maintenance services for the district. It calls for a, a maximum of three uh, uh, amendments for an additional term. In this case, we have the second year where their, uh, Valley Crest is requesting that uh, we renew their agreement at no additional cost to the district. I would remove we uh, um, approve of the agreement set forth. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, moving to the second request for long term use of Rush Park facilities for the GOND Community Church. That could also be GOND if I, if it's an acronym or not, I'm not sure. but. If there are for any uh, representatives, <clears throat> now would be time to come and talk to us. Please do. Hello, uh, my name is uh, John Park. I'm the youth pastor for GOND. You know, GOND stands for Go and Disciples Community Church. And uh, you know, we've been using the church for, I believe, six months right now. And uh, we want to renew the lease for a year, and that's the proposal that we have. And uh, you know, I just want to say we are we feel very fortunate to have a worship service in this um, building, sharing the building with the Calvary Chapel Los Alamitos, and and I guess uh, we've been um, very fortunate to have them share the equipments with us. And uh, you know. I thought it would be a kind of difficult mix with two churches combining, especially Calvary Chapel and we're mainly Korean-based church, but we've been able to, uh, you know, join perfectly and uh, like brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. Yes. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the board, you may recall that last summer you approved a conditional permit uh, request for six months in order to determine whether or not there was compatibility with this organization and with Calvary Chapel. We've had no issues arise among the parties and staff is recommending that uh, you extend this for a year. Typically, renewals of this type do not come to the board, but because you made a conditional uh, approval, it is now before you for a one-year extension and uh, we recommend your, your uh, positive approval. Do we anticipate that uh, in our community there may be additional requests for that time frame? I'm thinking it should be the same over the next 12 months as it has the previous six. We've not so had, we have projection on that? We've not had any demand for, this, for the building for the hours that it's being used. Excellent. Now, I'm looking at page 91 of 95 and it says no more Fridays. So you were using it on Fridays before uh -huh. and now you're electing not to use it on Fridays? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that. No, I, okay. Any other questions? Your staff is fine, and there's no, there's been no exactly. Mm. I, then let's hear a motion. John, I move that we extend uh, the user permit user permit for an additional year. All second. There we go. All in favor, say aye. 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 
Aye. As well. Any opposed? Okay. Very good. We well, are welcome and thank you. Thanks oh, for being part of our community. Thank you. We appreciate okay, it. Happy holidays and God bless. God bless thank you, you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As well. Wow, it's hard to believe. I believe this brings us to general manager items. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> uh, Chairman, members of the uh, board. <clears throat> my pleasure tonight to just give you a brief overview of my first week here at the district. And it's been an excellent uh, uh, opening opportunity for me here. The staff has been terrific, uh, very supportive. Uh, <clears throat> Henry and I have spent considerable time uh, looking over the operations. We took tours of all the facilities, walking tours, in the buildings, out of the buildings, around the parks looked at your capital improvement program and the many improvements that you've made in your facilities, which have been an excellent uh, addition to the community. Uh, at the same time, the playground uh, project here at uh, Rush Park uh, was initiated on Monday of last week, and they're on schedule now. They were behind a little bit. Back on schedule, they intend to finish within 10 days. There have been no blips in the, in the project itself. So we're looking forward to get the completion of that within 10 days by the first of the year that playground should be fully operational. They'll be taking the sand out of here and, and taking that to uh, Rossmore Park at the end of uh, next week. The signature wall, we, we went out and visited that site as well, knowing that there are uh, major uh, concerns there in terms of deterioration. And uh, we did uh, award a, a contract here to OJ Construction to go in and do a very minimal uh, effort, uh, removing 20 bricks to get in and see what the cause of the problem is there uh, causing the erosion. Uh, very minimal cost to that, but once we get that analysis and we see the site opened up there and determine what the problems are, we'll be coming back to the board with a very specific recommendation in terms of how we move forward uh, in the future to address that issue. Uh, we also have the Operation Santa Claus and Senior uh, Santa and Friends uh, uh, this Friday is the last day you can bring in uh, uh, toys and, and gifts uh, unwrapped uh, for that effort, and we appreciate the community support. It's in cooperation with our HOA, and uh, they've been very supportive, our homeowners group, as well as the sheriff's department. So we're looking for the uh, completion of that and be able to distribute some of those uh, nice gifts uh, to people who are in, in great need. The uh, we also attended the last two meetings of the uh, Caltrans uh, that we meet every Monday at 1 o'clock. That's on the West County Connector uh, project. And uh, essentially just keeping us, us up to, <coughs> to uh, par on that uh, project. They are closing uh, Seal Beach Boulevard at 10 o'clock each night through this week, uh, both uh, inbound and outbound uh, uh, lanes. So that, that project, they feel it's, it's on schedule, and uh, they're working very closely with us, trying to minimize any impact, whether it's from pow driving or dust or whatever. They've been very open, very receptive to the communities in trying to address those issues. The, uh, well, we all read in the paper about the uh, Orange County officials to widen the 405 freeway without toll, and that was uh, apparently approved by the, uh, the OCTA board on uh, Monday or, or Tuesday this week, I believe. And uh, it was a 10 to 4 vote. That issue is still not closed, but bottom line is they approved uh, adding one additional lane going south and one north and uh, getting that project underway. But there's no indication that in the long run that they won't go after the toll roads. And they feel Caltrans is still going to push that issue. But at least for now, we got one lane in each direction approved and Caltrans be moving or uh, OCTA be moving forward with that project. That's good news for all Mr. of us. The toll roads, they're not precluding the possibility of toll roads in the future, but that decision will be made by Caltrans, and we'll just have to continue to be very vigilant in that regard. Can you identify who the four no votes are? I'm just curious who voted against what you seems know, to be sure the best the alternative. I'm not said who there. voted against, but I'll get that information for you for sure. Okay. I'm That's just curious who. It was 10 to 4, though. Wow. Yeah, I attended that meeting as well, and it was unclear who the no votes were at the time. So I also would be interested in that. And we'll get it. If you can't get it, I'll pursue it myself. And, and one additional question: the Caltrans meetings. Uh, does Ryan Chamberlain attend the Caltrans meetings? Who Who is that, sir? I, I got the name. Gil Gilchrist is the one. You mean Gilchrist? Ryan Chamberlain. No, no sir. No. He's. He's like the, like the lead supervisor. I don't, I don't know his exact title. No, sir. He okay. Does not. Probably because it's like a more localized meeting in terms of the issues. Right. Or so I don't know. It's okay. Basically, Westminster uh, representative is there, Claire. 
and uh, Los Al, I think, and us basically. They're just trying to address okay. any local That's probably issues. Why. It's good communication to keep us up to speed on what's going on. If we Indeed. have any major issues, we get right back to our board. Make sure you're aware of them. Thank you. Certainly. <clears throat> well, actually, you want to also go over the, re the budget, the approved budget, and Henry will make that presentation. That's, he says that's his last one. We'll see. Mr. President, members of the board, this is my last and final act as your inter interim general manager, and I've dated this document December 1st of 2013. What we typically do is we bring you a proposed budget, we have budget hearings, you adopt the budget, and then we have an audit. And as a result of the audit, then we get numbers that are reconciled to both fiscal years. And at that point, then, we develop what we call our approved final budget for 2013-2014. And the purpose of this document, then, is to indicate a point of departure for any adjustments to the budget going forward. As you know, in February, you'll do a mid-year budget adjustment, and it'll be based on these reconciled numbers. So what you have before you is the final adjusted budget from 2012-2013. And, and, and so then when you move, it, move to the, fi the following year, it also sets into motion the estimates to close for the next fiscal year's budget. It also provides information. When you first adopt a budget, you're presented with just a whole host of numbers to look <coughs> at and not much data but no information. This is an informational document which I think illustrates for the community and for our sister agencies who also get a copy of this document. What, how the district is managed, how it's governed, how, it's, uh, how it distributes its, its revenue, how it, how it allocates its costs, and uh, is, is really a, a, a document which uh, speaks volumes about the activities of the district, and I'm, I'm pleased to present to you my final act. Thank you, sir. This brings us to board member items. We'll start with you, Mr. Kaleb, or Director Kaleb. I think it would be fruitful for the community to know by first and last name the OCTA board members that voted against uh, anything but one additional lane going in each direction. I don't know if they're city councilmen or city council women, if they're appointed at large, if they're longtime board members of OCTA, I think it's important that the community know who they are and then perhaps try to discern what their motivations are, try to understand this. It's, it's hard to get one's head around why one would see the need for this, uh, at least from my perspective, being the, one of the communities most directly impacted. I, I understand when one is furthest away from the issue, it's not my problem, it's not in my backyard, so I don't care but um, they do represent the County of Orange and we are within the County of Orange even though we are the most west portion of the county. I think it's good information for the community to know and uh, in future times maybe those names may uh, raise uh, themselves again to the attention of people where uh, perhaps a more closer scrutiny can be applied to why they will be making decisions on our behalf Director Coletta, what you may not get from that information is whether the four f no votes were people who supported two lanes in each direction or people who supported toll lanes. So that's additional information that we may have to ferret out. Well, I interpreted what was stated, and maybe I misinterpreted that, but I assume but what was said that the four lesser number of the 12 were those in favor of greater number of lanes and a toll. What they voted for, the 12 people voted for one lane in each direction. Right. The other four could have voted for two, no because they wanted two lanes or no because they wanted toll lanes. So that's, that's what we'll have to determine. It's going be good to explore that and publish that. I can add one additional thing. One of the board members who is from our neighbor city of Seal Beach, uh, Gary Miller, he did not like any reference to alternative three left in the document since Daryl Johnson was pushing for alternative one, the one lane in each direction. So that's another thing we'll determine if he was a no vote because of that, 
and I believe he well could have been. Okay. So that's to be determined. Gary Miller could have been a vote? For that reason, the reason that, well, I have some, uh, some comments on this as well when, it's, when, when my name is up, but. Okay, uh, I'm done, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. No, okay, done. He's done. Your turn. Yeah, Go sure. for it. Go for it. All right, so I actually attended uh, uh, two, two OCTA meetings uh, during the month of December. The meeting on uh, the 2nd of December, which is the Highways uh, uh, Committee meeting, and also the, OC, the full OCTA board meeting on uh, yesterday, the 9th. And uh, I'm there mainly because the, the issue that out of everything they discussed was uh, the I-405 expansion project. And uh, the, the Highways Committee meeting directed OCA staff to continue development of Measure M Project K, as Mr. Ruth has said, to develop one uh, lane in each, each direction. And the, if, with the descending four votes, it was approved by the full board yesterday, you know, 12 to 4, to go ahead with the recommendation of the, of the highway, uh, the recommendation of the Highways Committee. And as you can well imagine, this opened up a can of worms with many of the attendees who were making comments. Most of these people uh, are electeds from along the cities, along the 405 corridor. And they got up and they all, among other things, not wanting toll roads, of course, but to a person, they all indicated a preference. What they said was the, the real preferred al uh, alternative, which was alternative two, two lanes in each direction, indicating with all the new infrastructure that's going in under this, that it made economic sense to put two lanes in each direction. And, uh, Daryl Johnson, the CEO of OCTA, uh, gave uh, his three reasons for <coughs> indicating uh, the uh, desire to go ahead ASAP with Alternative 1. And he was saying, first of all, the, the cost of any delay uh, is $3 million per month for any delay in the project. And secondly, he was concerned about losing confidence from the voters who uh, they said, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was pretty well supported for Measure M. And he, he does not want to disappoint the voters who want Measure M. And he made that very clear. And the third thing that he mentioned was that uh, the economy is in such a shape that that he, uh, we're only getting about 65% of the monies that they ex expected in support of the project. So there's also a shortfall. So all of those things are telling him, even with the 500-ton uh, uh, gor gorilla of an elephant in the room in terms of toll roads, he says, we've got to push ahead and, and go with this, this alternative. And... Um, I just want to add one more thing in terms of my feelings about how this affects a lot of Rossmore residents, because today of all days, our property taxes are due to the County of Orange. And unless you've lived in Rossmore for 50 years, you're probably paying substantial monies to the county for your property taxes. When you factor in the additional one half cent sales tax to support Measure M, there, there's additional monies out of our pocket. Now, if we add on top of that another probably in the neighborhood of $100 a month, if, if state and federal officials decide uh, that they're going to go forward with toll lanes, which I fully intend that they'll probably do, uh, you know, that, that's another burden on us. So I, th I think the old saying is, you know, what do you do with your discretionary income? I'm thinking with all these uh, expenses, the folks in Rossmore may have no discretionary income. So, I, I don't know. I, I feel, you know, pretty strongly that uh, even though I'm not confident that Mr. Johnson will get his way, I'm, I'm strongly behind him. And uh, next, I just want to uh, 
welcome our uh, general manager to, uh, to our board, and uh, I feel that uh, he will do an excellent job of, of representing our community, and uh, I think with his stewardship, we'll do, uh, we're in very good hands. And lastly, I'd just uh, like to wish all the residents in our community uh, a very happy holiday season. And if you're like me, and there's a thousand things to do at this time of year, please take your time and drive safely. You'll still get there okay and be able to accomplish everything you want to. And how about a Christmas present for all of us, which is no toll roads. Thank you. Director DeMarco. All right, thank you, Mr. President. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome Jim Ruth. Thank you, for, thank you very much for being here, and uh, I'm, uh, I have all the confidence in the world with you, and um, good luck um, in the coming months, and look forward to working with you. Appreciate that, okay. likewise. Um, I wanted to um, congratulate um, the Los Alamitos High School girls volleyball team who not only um, won the CIF um, championship uh, a couple weeks ago, um, they also won the um, Southern Section, they were the Southern Section champions, the CIF, and they went all the way to the state championship uh, last Saturday and came up just a little short, but I actually went to uh, one of one of their games. My son goes to Los Alamitos High and went to every one of them. And they were, what an incredible team. And uh, um, three of the members on the team um, lived right here in Rossmore and I just wanted to congratulate them. Uh, Sydney, Bema, Brittany, to Luo and Julia Patterson. And I wanted to congratulate the team and especially the, the young girls, young women that uh, reside in Rossmore. Um, and I also want to wish everyone a happy holiday, a safe holiday. And um, because we had um, the Orange County Sheriff here, I also want to um, remind everyone um, we, we live in a safe community. Um, we thank our Orange County Sheriff um, for all that they do, and um, I want to remind everyone, certainly report and be diligent in protecting our homes and our streets. So that's it. Thank you. Well, first of all, I just want to welcome you to the community, Mr. Ruth. I look forward to working with you in 2014 and beyond. You, you come with fabulous credentials, and I'm nothing but impressed, and I'm ex excited to see what you can do with us. Um, I, uh, the, I just wanted to thank, uh, I believe it was the RHA or whoever put this on, the uh, Holiday Post decoration um, uh, workshop. Those are, those are really cool to see throughout the community. I, was busy this year, but next year I definitely plan on uh, doing that little adventure. That seems that that seems fun. Um, and finally, the, it is holiday season, and if you do indulge in adult beverages, please take a taxi. Don't please do not drive buzzed or drunk or anything. There's just a, there's so many taxis around, and, and it's just so much. It's so much easier for every, for everybody, and just keeps the world safe. That's all I have. So thank you. Okay. I too want to again thank you for stepping up and helping our community. Uh, we have very high hopes for you and we look forward to uh, your leadership and working with you. In a few days it will be my birthday and every year it seems that it always falls around this week and I always put out my birthday wish and my birthday wish this year is for people just to slow down. It's the holiday season. People get so preoccupied with shopping, with to-do lists, with stuff, that the real purpose of this time is just to slow down, enjoy the people who you love, and just kick back and chill out. We take ourselves all way too seriously, especially around the holidays, that, you know, I gotta make this turkey just right, or whatever you're cooking. Just 
enjoy the, the real purpose of what the season is for you guys. I, I personally know what that means to me, but everyone should do the same. Um, I also want to thank all of the community because about seven or eight months ago, we found out about the big 405 project and we saw how they wanted to put lots of lanes. And unfortunately, where the 405 ends in Orange County, the other side, Long Beach, is gonna create or could potentially create a huge bottleneck. We had a lot of town hall meetings. Uh, we helped uh, inform our neighborhood and our community of what's going on and everyone did a very good job of signing petitions, of writing letters. And uh, this week's vote is actually the best vote outcome that we could have imagined. Um, in case you don't know all of the issues here, only having one lane on each side is definitely going to help with any potential bottlenecking. If they did go to two lanes, our good friends and neighbors in Seal Beach in College Park, that almond wall would have had to be moved in. That would have affected one of their parks, their streets, and would have made it a lot more congested. So currently where the OCTA is, is actually in the best ideal scenario. Uh, we couldn't have asked for anything better. But with that said, we have to stay on top of this because these groups of people are known for switching because we had the same discussion a year and a half, two years ago, where we thought it was all settled and sure enough, it came back. But I do want to applaud the community for coming together, for signing petitions, for uh, making your voices very well heard. Uh, this issue was picked up by Channel 2, Channel 9, and uh, we were a part of that movement that made that happen and I want to thank everyone for that. So with that said, everyone have a safe, fun, healthy holiday. Remember to take your vitamins this time of year. It's getting cold. And uh, we'll see you next month. Meeting. Oh, actually, is there a motion for adjournment? I got ahead of myself there. <laughs> uh, um, before we do that, can I make one more editorial comment? Why not? And this is a little strange because we're talking about the almond, uh, the sound wall. They'll have to move. And yet, uh, the representative in Seal Beach, Mr. Michael Levitt, who they have different districts. He represents the district where they have the Leisure World area, and he's strongly in favor of two lanes in each direction. And I did not get a chance to talk to him to find out why that is. But uh, I need, among other things, to find out where each of the folks in Seal Beach where their heads are on this because they seem to have different ideas. They're not really folding together, you know, as a community. They're, they're going district by district, it does appear. So that's another thing that I'll have to ferret out. Is there a motion? So motioned. Second. Okay. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>